No, yeah, I don't. I have one. I said most. No, of the game. I, most. Stay, I, I said I, most. I said those survivor drop. Those are in trouble if those survivors are competent. Yeah, yeah. Preston, Preston. That one. survivor drop is a. Well, game. then again, it's yeah. player base. Yeah, let's Rival go to Preston, guns, guys. Potentially like. sniper rifles together as if two survivors that are... can meet up and know their survivors together. Oh, that's strong. Okay. I think we kind of need to have like a defined definition of what balance is, because a lot of times when I hear on these debates, it's like. I think people might have like a different idea of what is balanced in their head right off the bat. Almost everybody here in the debate and almost everybody here in chat has gotten to a point of the game where they feel they need to not play optimal to even have fun. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Pot Pies Paul Debate. We have some audio. Awesome. We have some new faces tonight. That's going to be a great discussion. We have Gimp and we have Mert joining us for the first time. And today we are going to talk about something very special. We're going to talk about game balance, which is uh, pretty fitting since we just uh, came out of a dev stream where they tried some uh, new games mode to try the, the balance of them. So we have a very simple question tonight, which is uh, do is the game balance and do the survivor team overpower the trader team? We are just going to go right away with our debaters right now. I will give each of them, as usual, one or two minutes to introduce themselves. They can tell us what they think about the question, uh, who they are, what's their experience with the game, and where we can find them. So, Gimp, it's your first time here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll Hello. give you I'll give you two minutes to introduce yourself and uh, shout out to your content if you're a content creator. I'm the Gimp. Hello, everyone. I've been playing Project Winner for like two years. I'm pretty opinionated on the game. Uh... I am on the side that survivors do typically overpower the traders much too often. And uh, I stream sometime on Twitch. It's, it is Gimp, and that's it. That was short and sweet. Uh, Zeke, your turn. Uh, I'm Zeke. You can find me on Twitch as Zeke0313 on occasion if I. It's kind of up in the air at the moment. I'm on the side of survivors overpower traders typically. And uh, yeah, I've played the game since it came out on Game Pass. I'm pretty sure I've played in almost every type of lobby you can play in. Everyone is low. Let's uh, let's do this. Is it better? Can you guys say something right now? Test. Test. Is it much better? Test. Test. Much game. better Test. right now. I win. You win. Okay. Survivors <laughs> are overpowered. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Seems to be better. Thanks, Pizza, for telling us. I think it's much better now. Um, Preston, so welcome back to the show. I think it's your third, fourth time. Uh, more than that, I believe. More than that. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm on the uh, survivors overpower traders most of the time. And uh, I'm a replacement for someone, unfortunately. But uh, I played the game for two and a half years, and I make YouTube videos on and don't really stream anymore but uh via the name preston man so uh yeah you know preston, you're not just a replacement you are a full fresh and well welcome guest to the show i've so. been re i've been replacement twice tonight you don't don't give me that <laughs> i'm trying to make you feel better okay well no i don't, don't want to feel better i'm fine to be number one replacement <laughs> hey if you didn't sign up and you still got pulled in that means you're even even more of a contestant you know look at that blue team love blue team working together i hope to see red team is gonna work together <laughs> like that again uh cry it's been a while since we see you on the show so thank you so much it's been uh Hi, we're thanks. happy to see you in your glorious beard thanks uh my name is cry i've been playing the game for maybe a year or so and uh i used to stream on twitch but uh i don't anymore for now uh i'm on the side that uh that i believe that survivor are not overpowering traders actually i believe there's only one good argument that survivor overthrow overpower traders and if the blue team say it i will actually say it and agree with them other than that there's no more argument that would actually make sense i'm quite excited to uh, hear that one argument if it comes out tonight awesome so uh recurring guest Sol has been here for three times right now so how are you doing buddy tonight? Yeah. i'm doing great honestly tonight's gonna be a sober me tonight so we're not doing none of the wild shit no more <laughs> What's your experience with the game, and where can people find you if uh, if you're creating some content? Uh, I don't do any content besides for Asparagus's TikTok, which you guys should all go look at. 
There's a couple of clips you will love. Um, yeah, I, I'm on the side that the game is balanced in a sense that. Well, we'll get into that later. And I believe our side, with my two lovely partners, will be doing well. Awesome. That's a uh, sober introduction. And uh, second new contestant tonight, Mirth, who is here for the first time, uh, like Kim. So, Mirth, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate your, your presence. Uh, what do you think about the debate tonight? What's your experience with the game? And where can people find you if they want to see more of you? Um, hi, I'm Mirth. I play Project Mentor. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's, that's a... Short and sweet. Short and sweet. I don't know if the red team is going to be blown out of the water short and sweet like that, or if they're going to blow blue teams out, but we're going to see tonight. So just a few announcements before we go, guys. Uh, I just want to tell a few things to our chat. So you guys notice uh, since a few, two weeks, we have a new overlay, which is pretty awesome. We have a ticker that goes down at the bottom of the screen, but we can also have questions popping up on screen right now. So if you have any questions or if you guys have any input you want to be shared, I'm talking to the chat right now, obviously. You want to be shared with a uh, contestant or you want a specific question asked to a specific debaters make sure to highlight your question so you go to the chat and you go to the channel points and you can highlight your question for 10 channel points which will ensure your question will be automatically sent into my software that will make it pop up on screen so that way i will not miss your question and we'll be able to interact with what we have to say to our guests that being said, all the debates, we are now on debate 12 tonight, which is pretty good. Uh, thank you so much for participating so far. All the debates are on YouTube right now. So if you want to find my uh, YouTube page, click this link that you see here. Uh, I've made a link tree uh, link with all my social media and you go to my YouTube, you'll be able to find all the previous debates that are here, all 11 previous debates. Moose dude, man, thank you for showing us tonight. Um, Pizza said, only I like your message, otherwise it, exactly, I don't know, maybe I said it wrong, but that that's exactly, if you, mm, yeah, well, if you have a question and you highlight it or a message, it, it will send it to, to my, uh, it will send it to my software. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, all, uh, if you want to see more, this show is, is on episode 12 and we will be doing much more. So make sure to follow and subscribe. That being said, we're going to take once or two break tonight. So the way the show is structured, we have two or three sections. Uh, we are now in the first section. I have a few questions prepared for debaters. After 20 minutes, approximately, we're going to take a five minute break to run some ads, go to the bathroom and refill drinks. Uh, and we will be back. So when you see us leave, do not leave. We will be right back. Guys, uh, are you ready? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, first question I have here, I'm just going to uh, use this first 20 minutes to just go broad strokes. We're just going to uh, touch the surface and we're going to go deeper after the first break. I would like to know why you guys think the game is either balanced or on, on balance, depending on your side. Uh, blue team, does anyone of you want to try to go first? Uh, I could start, I guess. Yeah. So, um, first, I think we kind of need to have like a defined definition of what balance is. Because a lot of times when I hear on these debates, it's like, I think people might have like a different idea of what is balanced in their head right off the bat. And then it causes disagreements, right? So, to me, and you can correct me or, or you know, have your input on what you think balance is. Uh, I th think of balance as like when the game is being played optimally, when it's being played at its like sweatiest, so to speak. If you're in there and you're, you know, somebody that's got a thousand hours and you're playing with other players that have a thousand hours and everybody's trying to play to win, it does the game have certain tactics that are clearly stronger than other tactics. If it does, that's imbalanced to me. If there's certain tactics that are just blatantly stronger than many other tactics, that's that to me is when the game becomes imbalanced, right? So if we get that definition down, I think it's it probably we'll probably agree a lot more. We probably, I don't think this is a uh, as divisive of a debate as it might seem by the title, honestly. Um, Cry, so, you want to jump in? Oh, sorry, sorry, game. Go ahead. Yeah, that that, that yeah, that's yeah. the issue because the questions actually uh, are the survivor and overpowering the trader it's not about balance right it's like a specific well, part of the balance that's the thing because of course i have argument that will reach you guys way more if the game was is the game balanced 
I Not also like want it. to touch I... overall game balance tonight. I think this is something we will touch later on. I'm pretty sure most of you will bring it. Uh, so, the prompt was to introduce a topic, but yeah, we're not only going to talk about yeah, Survivor. I, I wasn't. I was going to get into it. Um, my okay, next thing was ahead. just the oh. when it comes to like is it overpowered. I was mostly going to be discussing tactics. Like, do survivors have tactics that seem overpowered? And if they do, it does seem that you know how often does it happen? Does it do they overpower traders all the time? Uh, so yeah, I was just that was just the next finishing part to it. Is that the, it, to me? The tactics that you can utilize are, are what should be discussed here. Maybe, and, and you know, if you have more to discuss, obviously that too. But so to further on to Gimp's point a little, I think almost everybody here in the debate and almost everybody here in chat has gotten to a point at the game where they feel they need to not play optimal to even have fun. And I think in that regard, especially when it's on the survivor side with a lot of people that are very optimal at playing that shows how imbalanced it is and the survivors being overpowered because you need to play in optimally to actually enjoy the game in a lot of cases. I've been on the other end of that blade. I've been on more both often. Sides than, of it, but yeah. Survivors death, like survivors completely roll traders when people play really optimally. To me, I don't it's know about like, that one. well, I kind of can see it almost like on a scale. I wish I maybe had like drawn something out because I thought of this before. It's like on this side you have um, like widely imbalanced stuff. And then uh, as far as like traders being very powerful. And then you have on this side widely imbalanced stuff as far as survivors being powerful. And what you want the game to be is kind of in the middle in the RNG of bunkers and stuff like that to dictate where it's going to land in the middle of it. So the game varies some, but in my opinion it varies too much and with the survivor buffs that it's gotten it's very farther to the survivor side right uh, what survivor and, buff do you have in mind Kim? um the guns were the start of it which was a long time ago where they buffed guns it was like more than a year like year and a half ago but that was kind of like the beginning of it simply due to the fact that you know obviously traders can use guns too but you don't have six traders uh, traders are going to be outnumbered in, in the occasion that guns do he end up it. in a lot of survivor hands he said it Oh, he said um, your thing already, Cry. Yeah, yeah, he said my thing. And that they're is outnumbered. Exactly a big problem. It's outnumbering. The snowball effect is pretty guns. real as far as that outnumber, because it's like, it's not not only is it just another gun and more ammo in another person's hands, but when they combine, it's like more than twice as powerful. Yeah. It's like when, when two guns are hitting somebody at once, you deny it's not heals. just twice as strong. It's literally like yeah. very much stronger. You know, you can just melt somebody. It's, yeah. Isn't it Trader's job then, knowing that, to try to separate the survivor to make sure they don't do that big group that's impossible to deal with? Depending on the um, group, you can't do that, unfortunately. You can't do that with some groups, and that's what I mean by optimal people. If people want to be Solar optimal Flare. and you have four plus people, it's very hard to stop them fast enough for something to do happening. Like to make Most people happen. wouldn't know to term dead ball. Uh, Solar yeah. Flare is supposed to be the tool that splits them up. But in my experience, it usually just it results in me very quickly running straight back to the cabin after I've been solar flared yeah. with almost no interference or interruption as long as I know the map. Or, or so especially when we're familiar flares. with the map, right? Yeah. yeah. I've had solar flares as a trader basically just railroad me because it puts the survivors in better positions than it put me in. And it's supposed to help me somehow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned uh, something. Oh, go ahead, Saul. Uh, I'll ask my question after because i was just gonna wait for everyone else to finish saying their part pretty much my whole view on it balanced it depends on again you say it depends on like the rng of what the bunkers have and what you can get from whatever also depends on the map this is overall like do survivor overpower the traders there are maps that like you can get fucked over as survivor which we've discussed Except about that two maps everybody hates and barely wants to play half the time on, oh, I love playing on both of those maps. Though. I love those. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about like average maps. in the community, though. Like, okay, oh, well, most yeah. People hate those maps, so. Talk yeah, about but the vanilla maps. Like, you want to talk about the, the vanilla maps? Game. You want to talk about that? We're talking about all maps in general. It's just based around the people. Of, like, do survivors kick ass all the time or not? And I honestly believe that survivors don't always do it. Again, it's based around the lobby. If you have randoms and you try to get a good, concise group, there's always going to be that one guy that's going to troll. Or you can get unlucky as shit and have like the entire group but not give a fuck. It takes fuck. three people to take a game over. 
if all three people are playing competently or a level above optimally than the rest of the people in the lobby and they all land on survivors, GG's. Five yeah, minute game, uh, game. If there's GGs. at least like two competent traders as well. Yeah, yeah, but then you're talking thing. about five competent people and you have a pre made. Okay, but. And then you... once you add the couple more people in, then it's survivor the survivor side again. Okay, but that's the whole point. Traders have to use their wits to deceive people. It's the whole point of the game. You have to get them to not focus on it. Also, kill them as well. You have to stop them. The whole point of the the whole matching of it. You have less traders, but they have to do more work to win. But the whole Actually, point of it is no, like... Don't. So, let's say in a scenario that they're, the trader is being a sheep. And mm -hmm. maybe they have a wolf partner. Maybe they yeah. die. Maybe the wolf partner dies. And the sheep's got to switch tactics. If survivors are doing certain tactics, you're, I mean, traders just basically put into a position where they almost can't do anything unless they were already expecting this. And, you know, if you're just sheeping around, your partner dies halfway into the game, what do you, I, I'd like to know, like, what you can do to adjust and be smart about what survivors are doing, like you're saying, you know? Well, if you, okay, so for, personally, for me, I've been in that situation a couple of times. I usually like to go sheep first because I'm not very good at fighting off hand. But if I'm pushed to the corner, I will do my best to it. And then I just go for a lot of the lines of, I'm just going to keep taking parts out of the first objective. If I can, if the first objective was already finished, sabotage it, run to cabin, get a solar flare, or like, not I mean, solar pulse, whatever I feel like getting, whatever I feel like making is the best choice in that scenario. Depends on my whole output and like what I see as the second it's objective. Solar pulse, basically, you because typically you switch to exile wolf. and or yeah. sabo, so it's a pulse. So, I think the solution switching here. to wolf later. Well, no, game, I can always though. just like do a remote get two remote sabos, just continuously use those and like draw out time. You're, you're as well as wasting points to a degree because you might get one in a drop or like you can probably hand touch it if they're rushing that hard. Like there's there's. I don't it, find it, the drops are reliable. Is all, it either. wasting no, points? No, they're using really the tool. Too. And that's another here. reason right there. You. you get double you get radios, double, double objective locator. Yeah. yeah, that's just not right fun. beside second. Like that, you're telling me that that doesn't help the survivors. That's like doesn't matter. It's RNG at that point, but it's still you. Anything can be used. No, no, them. it's like That's RNG to the point where the survivors the are overpowered because the, the RNG doesn't balance for the traders at all. You don't it's have not, a guarantee uh, boost in those drops. That the the survivors get an overpowered thing. It's oh, you know what? You got dealt a bad hand. It happens. It's luck based. It's never going to be. Oh yeah, they start. It's they're constantly based, overpowered because you did work to saying... hold the survivors off. So all that work okay, you did, you do these more work then. About, you got. You, you can't though like where do you think well, there's limitless there's limits you get you can always get bear traps and bombs and stuff you can place around the second objective can you not exactly yeah, one disarm. you could always start getting poison crossbows and start aiming at people taking them down having them weak can't have them run and start shooting them from I, a distance you are greatly overestimating the power of a poison crossbow against anyone competent uh, isn't I mean, so well does that go for the trader side though because it's are they more available for traders that what I was gonna yeah, say is, is what, of... basically what Asparagus just pointed out. It's it, the RNG is there, like you're saying, but it, the the math is is survivor sided. Just the There's probability, yeah, the probability in general, you are way more likely be to be put into a good position and as a survivor just due to the pure probability of crates and things, and but the that's... amount of stuff that survivors can you know go out to a bunker immediately access the crates and grab the stuff. Maybe a trader can get in and get a few things. But it's like the number, the, the overwhelming numbers of survivors causes a snowball effect, even when it comes to acquiring gear and, and everything, you know? Uh, Cry just says he's waiting for his turn politely. Cry, you don't need to be oh, polite sorry. here. Yeah, this I, this I, is I a could, debate I show, so bring, bring it on, bring it on. I, I could wait all the time. It's just that uh, all your arguments are player-based and skill-based, so they're not role-based. So technically speaking... Most of the most of the stuff that you talk about is just luck based, as in like, oh, if you find a gun part, or if you find a trank, or if you find a poison crossbow and everything. Well, of course, the survivor could actually potentially uh, overrun the traders, but technically speaking, uh, the objective of the survivors are just to escape, while for the uh, while for the traders just to kill, and uh, they have that's two not, ways to do it. That's not the traders' objective at all. Well, it's to stop, not to kill. Well, it's to stop technically, but like Prevent it escape. stops when. It's to prevent, it's prevent escape, escape yeah, but the, it prevents. But they have to go down for the game to end, right? I mean, it Mega doesn't Blizzard mean that they have to kill them. But they have to. 
exactly yeah, but, but that's that's how it's that, programmed. That's, that's still like, running it's out not time, necessarily though. that you have to kill them it's just that once they go down they die yeah. That's not but like killing. what I'm what I mean is that uh, a trader is over is overpowering the survivor because uh, literally the both traders could stay at cabin the whole game and do nothing and if survivors doesn't do their job they're gonna lose and the traders are gonna win. But the other way around doesn't work. I feel like the so, presented situation is also kind of bad here because you're talking about like halfway through the game. So let's not not define halfway as like necessarily being 15 minutes in. Let's define it as like first being complete, right? So that's maybe like eight minutes. I don't know. Like in, oh, if it's gondola, it's like lobby, five minutes. Five, six. Yeah, five, six for gondola or in optimal lobby. Yeah, but like, but at that, I, I think that you know the solution here is quite simple. You know, you gotta just get a better wolf partner, right? Like, if you're if you're dying, like as a wolf, like you're pretty much the team's playmaker, right? If if they're death balling and you know that, and they have CC, maybe from a defector or some other like open bunker or something your goal is just not to meet them at all you, you just want to juice up right now. yeah i was like what your goal is just to juice up and no, get no, to like 2k at least uh, if you want to even have a hope of fighting survivors at that point well i mean so to be honest let's like let's face it like if it's uh, if like the survivor overpowering the traders are only dependent of like the player skill outside of like outnumbering them then it's clearly clear that they're not overpowering them. Because I don't if think you... it relies on player skill as much. I've seen like low-level lobbies just trounce really good traders just because they got a good setup from bunkers and stuff, you know? And, well, and yeah, the that's, other thing that's is... what I mean. It's like, let's say, for example, outnumbering the, it doesn't just mean dead balling. It's like, oh, I'm fighting two survivors as a trader. Well, there's four other survivors that are actual that I cannot stop because they're not there with me. They're doing objective or there's... A, there's some tactic like this that can actually work but like if you if you consider that because a certain player because you depending on the lobby that you have makes all the difference to a role is overpowered or not then i think you guys are wrong it's like yes like you have to balance a game towards how the player plays the game but as the role itself it's the other way around it's like it's not I because think... they found tactic to actually uh change the course of like what traders can do that survivors cannot because they literally change the trader role so that it can be uh universal into doing everything that it could because they didn't want them to be like stuck in a specific pattern so i do think there are tactics that survivors can use if they are experienced and optimal but i also think that they absolutely don't have to be a totally brand new lot i've watched people that are like within three games of starting and they smash first objective super fast as survivors because it was parts or something easy. I, I didn't help because I just sit back and watch or maybe I was ID thief. Like I've experienced this a ton of times where I see new players crush it. And it's like the traders, well, they either tried to be sheep at first and weren't able to stop or steal parts because the opportunity wasn't there because it was so fast. Either the survivors put in all their parts all at once and they didn't have a chance. If a trader doesn't have that opportunity and then all of a sudden they're in mid game because survivors just did the first objective in five minutes, then it's like, oh yeah, you can go and try to juice and stuff, but you better pray they don't have guns even if they're even if they're not good. Like anybody can take a gun and, and mow somebody down, especially if you're not super juiced. So if you are a trader and you decide to juice right off rip, you know, that's one thing. But if you're wanting to use any other tactic besides that, you might just get screwed by RNG. What, what skill, skill or tactics be gone. If anybody just does does what a normal survivor does, you could absolutely just be put into an unwinnable position as a trader. So, Kim, you said something I want to come back to, and uh, this was one of my questions for later, but I want to bring it now. Uh, it, maybe I misunderstand you. Are you saying that usually a lobby filled with newer player, uh, even the survivor, will still have a higher chance to win the game? If if you have like no, six new, six new new survivors uh, and one trader who knows what they're doing, I I would just say if the players are new and if they are literally doing anything like actually trying to play the game, then usually the objectives and stuff get done quite easily. Like 
the the games where people are like oh new players and they they complain about it are when people are walking around and playing minecraft and chopping trees or doing <laughs> nothing doing literally nothing throughout the game and i don't think we can even take those games into a coin into into the balance because like they that, almost like don't count you can't account yeah. for random stuff like that it, like, it's almost too random you can't balance the game around that even it's just like you can't that's say gonna the game's happen. balanced when six survivors hop in and do nothing but punch each other for the first five minutes yeah yeah that is not indicative of how survivors are strong or weak or anything like that's those that's how they decide to play and you have to talk about people that are trying to yeah. play the game those games shouldn't even be part of the conversation because they it's like why it's too random for us to even try to balance things like i've, I've had games well, as a uh, trader they're where part of the game the other not day too random preston, it happens fact, a lot so yeah no, no i i had a game at the trader the other day with preston in fact we didn't even want to play the game we just decided to play anyways i go on trader i take the gondola down I have to call it back because someone tries to call it back up. And by the time I get to the top, my trader partner and ID are both dead because of random griefers. And had the random griefers not been the people that survived the game and it was like the other way around and it was they were survivors that were actually not random griefers, that, that, I'm dead. The game it's just like, goes so fast because of something completely random. Like survivors have every chance to snowball everything because of anything. They're definitely okay, but the survivors really also get in their own way. So. as well. Like, do you want that? No, to be I'm the just point saying that's all. how stuff goes, though. But those games are how things go, and those games are not indicative of anything. Like that's just how things go, and that's the yeah. way, when you're talking about like the massive swath of games where you're like overall it's balanced. You know, you have all these randoms. Like, you can't count that game in any result of this conversation as being a game. Like. Yeah, you're basically saying survivors aren't strong when they do nothing. It's like, yeah. Like, of course. Not even that. No, it's, it doesn't even have to be like the entire lobby. It could be like just two out of the one out of the guys. No, if no, he's no. Wasting it, it, no. Time if one survivor's by... doing nothing, that, that lobby's still getting just. Not even him crushed. doing nothing. If, if one survivor's just attacking people constantly or well, causing think, a problem, they just kill them. I think if the question else, here. They just kill them. I think the question here, the if game, you they think, just turn and kill him and end it. If you think yeah. the survivor has an inherent advantage over the trader team, would you think that if, especially if the survivor do nothing and they're not trying hard enough, they will still be able to win? Um, in a lot of games, there's people like you have to gear down. <laughs> like, yeah. I had a full week of game that uh, that I've lost specifically because survivor were doing strictly nothing, and even the traders were like feeling bad for the survivor that were trying to do something because they couldn't do anything. Like Let's for see. example, there's only two people that that are trying to do bunker hunting, and there's six people waiting at cabin just goofing around, and the two traders just sealed the very few parts that the so the so, so is, that, is that game count as balance though? No, it's not. But I could it, take it's... your side and, and uh, put it there and say, well, you're supposed to use survivor tactics to rile everybody up and get everyone in a group so they do things. Just like as oh, a yeah, trader, yeah, you're yeah, supposed to the... burn and do whatever trader things yeah. to stop the survivors. Oh, okay, uh, oh, Gimp, I, I don't think we play a lot together, but like, uh, if, you, if you know me well, uh, I, I rally a lot of people to actually do stuff. And some people, when you ask them, just straight up tell you, no, I don't want to. Well, there's not much other than griefing and waiting for the survivor or drop that you can do to actually win the game. Hey, so how often yeah. does that happen to you? All the time? Oddly enough, it happened for almost like three days in a row in the, like a couple of weeks ago and never happened to me afterwards or before that. So in the it overall really scope weird. of you playing with mostly randoms and not pre-mades? Oh, no, they, what, they were pre-mades. think it's like a large percentage of time? Or, Even oh, in okay, pre-mades, well. Greg? If it's pre-mades, no, then... It, it, was, it wasn't pre-mades. It, okay. It's like like one rando or two max and the rest were pre-mades. So I was like really, really shocked. That's, I mean, I think that's kind of like what you guys, that's an issue with the lobby you're in then. If nobody's doing thank stuff you for that's that. a pre-made lobby, there's an issue with the people that you're playing with. <laughs> like, we are well, going to go like on a first break in two minutes, guys. Sorry to interrupt yeah. your cry. It's just that I want to hear a little bit more about Preston and Mirth, who have been a little bit more silent. I want to give you a chance to uh, say anything that's on your mind right now before we go to the first break, guys. Preston, Mirth, anything you want to say? Not really. I I think uh, I think Gimp and Zeke have a uh, have a handle on it for the most part. <laughs> I don't got much to add. Sorry. Uh, Murth, what do you why do you think the game is uh, not balanced towards the survivor? I th I think honestly, don't really recall any situation where um I I felt like I couldn't win a single game if I was either a survivor or a trader. 
like I, I mean, I guess I would drop this play part in those random pubs where people don't really do much. But overall, I feel like, um, you know, as a wolf, you just want to like grab as many energy drinks as possible and stuff. Like you don't even need to like interact with the like just the Asian and Russian meta. Just like know yeah. the spawns, grab every single crate on the map, and then hope for the best. Do you but sheep often? I, um, I sheep sometimes, but usually it just ends up with my wolf partner dying because usually they're not as good as. <laughs> I mean, that sounds really conceited, but I'm really sorry. <laughs> so I'm mostly I, wolf now, but like I've had many a game. I feel where... bad because the last oh, game I played with Mert, I died in the first. We were traitor teammates, and I was wolfing and died in the first two minutes. <laughs> I mean, if it's the first two minutes, that's fine. Like uh, I'll just switch to wolf. It's okay. Uh, every time I've ever wolfed it. It always is like the survivors are steamrolling already. Like I have no other option, and even then, it, it they steamroll me because even if my even my teammates alive, they still find a way. Like it's absurd. I don't understand how I mean, it keeps happening. But so like at that Cry point, you got a... situations. One I was waiting mm. for. I'm waiting for a certain point, just like Cry was, and I think Mirth like almost hit it. I'm waiting for you. I'm not gonna give it away because it's on your guys' side. It's a good point you can make. But yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're we about after the break. Though. Uh, after oh, the break, okay, guys, we yeah. Maybe think about it uh, during the break. <laughs> yeah, think about it. We're gonna take a five-minute break, uh, maximum five minutes. We will be going to refill drinks and to get a bathroom break. Uh, we'll be running some ads in the, at the same time. So everyone in chat, thanks for being here. This is far from over. Tonight we're discussing the game balance of Project Winter. If we think the survivor thing, survivor team is uh, overpowered over the trader tank we have the blue team over here that will argue that the survivor team is overpowered and the red team that will over uh, that will argue that the survivor team is not overpowered guys we'll be back thank you for being here and just stay hold on with So we have six debaters tonight, Gimp, Zeke, and Prestonman that are going after Cry, Sol, and Mirth. Gimp and Mirth are there for the first time. So guys, uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, before the break, we talked about the overall advantage that one team had over the other. Uh, I think it was Zeke, I'm not sure, that says something. And I, want, I wanted to bring it back. Uh, someone said, uh, Zeke, if it's not you, I'm sorry to misquote you. Uh, do you feel, do you need to play special rules to balance the game? So... Do you guys feel to have the game more balanced, you need to play by special rules and not play the game as it's quote unquote intended to make it more fair or not? 100%. I yeah, and why? If you want to have yes. a fun time that's balanced, you absolutely need to not play for the most optimal strategy. Because it's the fastest way to do custom mode. You either custom yeah. mode with harder stuff or everyone has to literally screw around for a few minutes while the traders get to do their thing. <laughs> No, nah, I feel like the traders just need to communicate. Like one person can sheep, like because I've done it. So, like we've had really, like the no, I mean, man, I, I don't think you've seen the lobbies I... that we're talking about. No, oh, I have, I have, and I lost in them, but I've also won in them just be by being a trader or by being a survivor. It varies very much. It's, I personally, I'm a, I just play sheep, and I will be, most of the time, I'll run in if I have a, any chance, and I'll just out myself. If I see like we're getting close to 20 minutes, I'll be like, you know what, 21 minutes. I left. I'll just go out myself. I'll go take all the parts they can. I'll run off. If they don't notice it, then they don't notice it. If we get the hysterical, I, or I can use the hysterical gas, I'll use that, and then I'll just run in, steal the parts I need to steal, and then just go run the fuck out. So two scenarios. Away somewhere. One, what if there's a survivor who's guarding and they're literally actively guarding by looking at the power thing so you can't even activate it, even if it was bunny event? And two, what if the survivors are hoarding the parts in their inventory or in hiding spots before they put it in all at once? And those are things that survivors will really do when they do an optimal play. Not even optimal, just just average play. Like Yeah, I, and if people okay. do that, then it's like, okay, that's a good way for survivors to keep track of what's happening and know who's evil. But then I just go for a fight, hopefully... And I'm pretty confident in my PvP to where if it's just a one on one fight and I don't think that somebody's gonna run in within like the next twenty seconds, I'll go for a straight attack on him. And I mean like twenty seconds isn't like when I start to run into the cat the place and start fighting him. 
because that's all I really need to fight with somebody. 20 seconds. If he starts running away, I just let him run away for a bit, and I just go take as much as I can. If not, I just try to, I get down, I get down. I tell my teammate, hey, I'm getting down. They know it's me. They don't know it's you yet. Uh, Just pretty much come back, act like nothing happened. There's a fuck. I they probably will get what, like a solar pulse or whatever. What if, what if one of the survivors tracked your teammate down and knows exactly who he is and he's already exiled and the second he's there, all survivors are mobbing him? Like this is like these are the kinds of situations that do occur when okay. survivors are playing the game. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. kind of luck based, right? But because that's if yeah. Surf, if the trader goes with wolf, it's like good luck trying to track him. If you had to uh, be extremely lucky to get one chance out of seven other players to actually track him while he I'm was. I'm not like, talking about tracking. I'm, I'm like him. following you down and making sure you know who. Like people will do that, and they won't like risk themselves. Like people are smart when people are playing and actually trying. They will chase down for info, only info. And that's well, all you that's, need in that situation. That's kind of what a sheep... Like, what I do as a sheep is I distract people as much as I can. I start talking, having a good conversation with people. Like, I will ha get them into engaged in what I'm doing. So these people aren't in my own in conversation. Bullshit. They're interested in playing the game. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> like, yeah. No, that's you, when, you that's could what get, we're talking about that's when like it's... No, but that's player. the whole point, though. You could literally average start distract them care. by just decepting them by just being like, hey, let's go do the task together. By the way... And then you could get like seven people, like five, two other people just joining in randomly because they were going to go together and they lost their third buddy. And they said, oh, you know what? Let's go with this group. At least they're doing something. We're not going to seem like losers or whatever, or we're not going to seem like we're not doing shit. And I could just start talking with them. If I'm the sheep, I could keep collecting parts that we need for the thing and just spread misinformation or just start saying like, oh, let's go to this bear bunker. You guys fight the bear. I'll stand here and open it with somebody and I just break it. Or... So like okay. whatever and then we'll say like oh you know probably like the wolf already came here broke it and then we just kind of got fucked over so so are you saying because I've, I've gone away with those excuses before are you saying that a survivor being <laughs> overpowered it's just a uh, it's just because traders are not doing the job properly yeah like if you're not a competent trader you're not gonna like do that well but if you're all competent players i feel like anyone <laughs> can have fun doing whatever role as long as you're used to playing with that role and what you guys all know your place in each role that you do like i, I can adapt agree. to wolf or i can adapt to sheep easily it doesn't matter to me i, I won't be the best at it but i do fine so i would agree with wolf having options like if you are an immediate wolf i could i could maybe agree with what you're saying but as a sheep i feel that they're are absolutely unwinnable scenarios that you can be put in and it happens often it happens all the time in average lobbies, sacrifices. random lobbies pre-mades pre-mades where people are trying not to even sweat it still happens like that is necessary sacrifices you gotta like bite the uh, bullet i've watched so many that. people just dc due to lobbies just well that's dc okay you, if you're gonna cancel no, 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 all, I mean, like, just people like people griefing, playing like gotta... three four games in a row not griefing not like the people like play three four games in a row are just like i'm tired of this shit bye just like okay, oh, yeah, fucking, yeah. i'm tired of getting steamrolled i'm tired of this game bye because survivors just steamroll because people are just without without punching each yeah. other to death at the start they're just rolling the game every time. Yeah, I have to go find I've a new lobby. Watch it happen because day just after like day before. Just... I've watched it happen to Gimstream. I've watched it happen to Asparagus. I've watched it happen to almost everybody. Yeah, yeah. So I remember Horse Thief having to rage quit some, Horse some Thief, stuff X, like that. X has basically said, "Don't play the game as actually playing the game anymore." Yeah. Like, can can you really tell me that survivors don't just steamroll people? Like, come on. Is it certain well, survivors or all survivors? Because as a trader, I, I'm... It's survivors being optimal. Because I'm going to come here survivors as a middleman. play for the objective. When I play I as a trader... from the average to the experienced trader or, or survivor group. Average to experienced. Yeah. Not like the people that are doing nothing. I don't count that, really. Because but... it's probably dependent on players, right? Because when I'm a trader and I know I have Cry and, J and JK against me, uh, I, I know it's game over from the start. What can I do? They're just going to rush and do first objective in 25 seconds. Go do the second and it's going to be over. I open two, two boxes and second is already done. So I give up from the start. However, when I have some other people that I don't really know and are newer to the game, I know I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to lead them by with a carrot. And gonna to have the them, game, I'm going to have them do everything I want. That's exactly the difference though. That's that's not the same thing. Like that's not you playing with people even in your level of ability at the game in general though. Like it, it's not that's not indication that's not an indication of balance. It's like if you take someone that comes from the Asian server who all he does is mirth optimize crate like he was saying, 
and you throw them into a lobby with people that have less than 100 hours on average, oh my god, those people are going to be screaming words at that person. They'll win 10 They're out of 10 games. They'll be very upset with how quickly they die. <laughs> like, yeah, they, they, they'll win literally but that's not, 100% that's not, of that's, the time. That's a whole that's... different thing, though. That's not, you can't mace balance or say that a team's overpowered off of that scenario. Yeah. Well, like I said earlier, it's like it depends on the point of view that you have. If you look at the role specifically, uh, like survivors are like... not overpowered, but like if you look at it at, on a player base and skills, of course, like there's some stuff to change because like there's literally a meta that allows team rolling and makes the survivor kind of overpowered because literally outnumbering the traders is like a big factor into that, that meta. Mm hmm that's the that's the issue there like that's if, also how the game works right there's six survivors or five depending on the round five exactly. or six and yeah. there are two tries so you all will always by design always going to be over over outnumbered exactly Even if there's an idp the he's probably helping survivors rng and stuff steamrolls that for the survivors too like what's the uh, what's the most thing you heard about the other guys or ghost when like there's two traders left and like two survivors left? You say it's over because you lost your biggest advantage, which was unnumbering them. No, no, yeah, I don't. I have one. I said most no, of the time. I, most, say, I, said I, most I say those survivor traders drop. are in trouble if those survivors are competent. Okay, yeah. Preston, mm -hmm. Preston, that survivor that. drop is a well. Game then again, it's yeah. player base. Yeah, yeah let's go to Preston, guys. Potentially like, sniper rifles together as two survivors are... that can meet up and know their survivors together. Oh, that's okay. strong. Preston, Preston. If I've I've played games where. The traders are, you know, they're they're doing their good, they're doing great. They're like slowing us down. They've killed off most of the people. Survivor drop comes. I know who the other survivor is, and they're both on top of me. They're both fighting me, but I like pull around with my sniper and I pop them like multiple times. Boom! That that it's game over. They they lost. They immediately lost. Yeah. So uh, and I've done that, that multiple times. Even like, even with even survivor if you drop. Them? Even survivor drop. I've. Uh, like when I'm by myself and there's two traders, if I get survivor drop, it, they they better goddamn pray because I can. If you split they, them up, game over. Yeah, if you split yeah. them up, game over. If you're very good at, as a survivor and you use cover, you can take them out one by one and they will also fall. But well, that can be the same thing for like traders though. If you're very, if you know they already yeah, got the survivor yeah. drop, you could just okay. Well then, you know what? We already have like some herbs that we use to heal up fully again after fighting the guys that we just fought. That probably we aren't exiled anymore because there's only two people alive again, and we can just exile. Oh, we'll just sit so... in the cabin and do nothing, because that's the only way you can win at that point in a lot of cases. Yeah, if you're at a time disadvantage, <laughs> you're forced out into the open. You're forced into vulnerable position and shit. Like, well, that's a big issue, right? Traders being able to win due to, uh, with uh, the time limit. It's like it gives you so much power over the survivors. But that's what it's... makes it balanced. But it's it's really not. I get the feeling that it's like too much time given in the in, if it's a confident lobby, you have to like make your make your plays and get your picks. Unless unless you do that, you're not going to have a good time later on in a confident lobby. Yeah. Again, if you can distract people enough long, like for as a sheep, if you're competent enough to distract people no a bit. Distracting... Like, I, I, re I really think know... that like you know, like, like the sheep's being. Role in, if like, you a see them all lobby. coming back for like dropping off their parts, or whatever you know, like okay, this group has like almost enough to finish it. There's probably already parts in there. If you start swinging at them inside of a bunker, attacking one of them, and then you just instantly take off to where the hatch is, you can get away. Reg like Margaret Lee, like those, Scott those survivors free. that can throw with a dozen parts in their inventory. They could throw, but. Again, I dodge and weave like bullets in the game. You can dodge and weave throwing. Oh, we're gonna play can. after this, right? Mostly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Vegas, we gotta ask that. <laughs> I think that as a sheep, like, um, in most lobbies, like you said, um, when there's not as many confident survivors, th there are a lot more situations where a sheep is more valuable. You can steal parts out. You can like down two people at once in a bunker if they're group of three and stuff but in a competent lobby there are three things you can do for me right you can get me a Impulse. gun you can get me three med kits or you can go for a play where you use a teleport event to kill one person to get a pick and transition to my second wolf right that's the only thing you can do like i don't care if you can that, steal parts that, out it's that not sounds like you're it's very overpowered in a lot of situations yeah. almost yeah. all of them actually <laughs> 
yeah, so get me a gun, get me three medkits, so I can like actually have like, I, I actually feel like um, medkits are actually really, really powerful part of the wolf arsenal. <laughs> that they makes are. sense. Because let, let's say you're like finding like even six guys with guns, right? Maybe they try to push you. You're undercover. Maybe one of those like tiny, nice rock things. You oh, down one true. person, and then even if you you just go underneath the cover med kit and you can make a decision: Do I want to run away? Even if I run away, like this guy's gonna. Even if the other guy has a med kit, he's gonna be losing health really quickly. I can just like run away and like buy my time. Let them like, and then like fight before he gets back to full, and it's like five survivors. I don't know. I have a specific question that I prepared for both teams and I would like to ask them right now. I have a question for the red team. Uh, I would like each of you, your impact on it. And after that, I have a specific question for the blue team. Uh, blue team, feel free to uh, to interact with the red team, but I want them to uh, answer each of them. A uh, red team, I, I just want to know, do you, so you say the trader, the survivors are not overpowered. Uh, do you think that both sides are equal or do you think that the traders are overpowered? Because there's a difference between both. Uh... It's because the way the question, the the main questions asked, is yeah. more about uh, it's less about player uh, for me. It's less about player skill and more about like how the role is. So technically speaking, if if you think that it's balanced to have six survivors against two traders, then uh, it gives you a good balance of why a trader is always better. Like one trader is always better than one survivor, and the only thing that can unbalance that is the player skill of both of those players. So uh, or guns. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Well, what that, that's what I mean. It's what, it's what I mean. Everything that everything that everyone has is either log based or player skill based. It's like because both side can have guns, both side can open crates, both side can actually, like you know, have a specific drop. Both side can actually like craft almost any items in the game. It's like both side can have trank. So at that point, it, that's even. <laughs> It's just how some, often uh, do survivors get it in comparison to how often do traders get all that stuff? Well, that's because depends which survivors one. have their There's numbers. Some parts, I think it's more that's often survivors. Violence. Yeah, depends. If there are two defectors, the survivors. Oh, God. Two defectors alone is enough to say the tra or survivors are overpowered, in my opinion. Yeah. In fact, yeah. that, that was one... said at the very beginning with Gimp. Like, that one number alone is just like, okay. Get out of here. Yeah, I don't know why they made that. this game against you. I don't even want to play. Like, I'm a trader. I see two defectors and three scouts. I'm like. Okay, I'm very tempted to leave because <laughs> this is going to be five minutes of just hell. <laughs> when you see two trackers and three hackers, you're just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah and to a degree, but this seems very less often. Uh, Saul, Mirth, you have any input or um, about the, do you think both teams are kind of equal or do you think the traders are overpowered because there's, there's a difference between both? I think for both sides, you they're somewhat balanced in a sense of there's both good sides and sides to each, like each team. You have to like think about how you want to play, because if I just go okay, I gotta we gotta do parts like we have to collect like scrap metal, we have to collect gasoline or whatever. If I'm like okay, let's go do that real quickly with some people. Okay, yeah, say two people come with me. Great, one of them is a traitor. The trader more often than not has downed us like twice, both of us, or like gotten us both low, and then like a random wolf would come out of nowhere if we're all in the like the lower west side. So it's it's very much like there's upsides and downsides to whatever you deal with or whatever you go through in the game. It just depends on how you play and how others play with you. Murph. Any any input on this one? After that, I'll jump to question my question for the blue team. I think that if the survivors have like crowd control along with a few sniper rifles, like it's GG pretty much, unless they make a few mistakes that you can exploit. That, um, but besides that, like I honestly think that it depends on how well the sheep can like support their tra wolf body. C can you get me a gun? And if, once you get me that gun, like positioning is gonna win me a fight more than my health bar will. You know, if or I have south middle side, of the crowd. Oh yeah, that's too. The crowd and, and, <laughs> and just like, like start whacking them, and then yeah. while I shoot them, yeah, just start like whacking. Basically hitting a good point there, honestly. That uh, with, as far as tactics, I think that there is an overpowered trader tactic, and and yeah, it involves basically what you're talking about almost. Like if you just go out and super juice, I, I will agree with that for sure. But other than that, it's like 
like survivors have to not play optimal where traders have to play optimal you know like traders are forced either if they if they really if you really want to win you got to do what you're talking about mirth and if you don't do that survivors can just screw around and they'll still become strong enough to to uh to mess any other tactic up any other way besides what you're talking about survivors are going to have a good probability of just becoming pretty fucking strong not not very easily stoppable you know I want to bring a comment by Pizza here. Pizza says she made a math thing, so I'm going to bring it on screen here. She says, all right, I went to everybody's profile, so the six of you, including 14 other people to make it 20, and took all of your average of escapes versus game played in lifetime. Only 41% of that is survivor escape, while your death percentage rate is uh, is average, uh, average is 60%. So that would seem to indicate that not even 50% of the time you guys win as survivors. For my own that's interest, I'd like to know. I, I'd like Pizza to post actually mine. Okay, I'm <laughs> gonna immediately mine. call Pretty out please. those stats because those involve games where everyone does nothing. Like in a, in a lobby where yeah. eight people are all new, if I'm at the traders will do nothing, and the survivors will problem. do nothing, and that everyone is, will die. That is honestly right. a problem. Like, and we talk <laughs> about the games that uh, go, uh, people goes like, oh, that person DC, let's reset. And I've probably does. thrown 200 games on yeah. that account easily. There, there is a like, massive just intentionally portion of thrown as survivor, excluded. like 200 games, actually. <laughs> those numbers are skewed by games that just don't exist, basically. Games that might as well not exist because there was no actual gameplay in them. It was just people doing whatever, you know? Okay, so it seems to be that the blue team seems to disagree with these stats, uh, and I don't they're, they're not going in your favor. I find those very interesting. Yo, pretty, considering... pretty good stats. Let's go. Red, I red, think they're red skewed would say by DC that it's like twenty percent survivor escape. I find that just an interesting difference too. And that twenty percent is also including all of these other games that are not games too, as far as mm -hmm. I've heard. Well, they're they're part of the game, aren't they? No, they're not. We're talking in... <laughs> if eight people load into a game and three people DC in the first 35 seconds, that's not part of the game. That's not part of the game. Or if balance. everybody DCs because it's Gondola and not literally everyone... Yeah, there was like a month game. straight of game? everyone just being like, ah, oh, Gondola, and six people with DC in my lobby, and I'm like... So Survivor I... are over part well, only in the game that you map. choose to count. Is that what, what I hear? What, sorry? The Survivors are only overpowered in the game you choose that are real games, and the other games, they don't count. Holy uh, shit, in in, in okay. games that are actually a game that you would con so like if you, if you're watching an esport game for instance and half the half the other team just goes and has to take a shit does that count as a game that's like a balanced game and fair <laughs> like that's that's their choice on. it's part of the game I would say I would say it's more about like we see those numbers <laughs> yeah, okay. and we have to take it like with like a let's say a, a five a percent like diff like a grain of salt but like at least with a five percent mistake or something like that. Like a higher probably higher than that. You got yeah. There's a lot of people that play private lobbies and stuff as well, where it's a full pre-made of eight, and they all yeah. just bought the game. One person and DCs. They go in and they're just like do 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 do, and like oh let's restart because Kelly DC. Oh, good. you know, like there's I've so I've been in a lot of those. Of that. That's a massive portion of games that are just oh well, that's a survivor loss. <laughs> Check it out, survivors are underpowered because they lost that game where everybody decided to play another match. <laughs> like no, you can't you can't argue that as being like. A reason why and now especially bounced. especially now with the dc penalty and the, the leave rate how many of those deaths are people just running into a bear <laughs> like or running into a wild animal or dying intentionally by eating raw meat or uh, oh like we said oh, we have to take it with a grain of salt right i'm yeah. just saying five percent is probably a low estimate as far as games that get messed up by stuff like that so pizza like, makes to be a... honest, for each stat, I would, I would put a five percent higher or lower average. But pizza, sorry, I, go ahead. Yeah, pizza brings a correction here. She says, uh, "You guys have to remember, any of us that have been playing since mid 2020, all of our games haven't been counted. The game completed, and I couldn't get a correct result. So, I have, I have only been playing since Game Pass came out. So my number is very, very, very accurate, and I can say I've probably DC'd on my Steam account." at least or like died intentionally like almost that difference that's there at least so these... how many of those games had other trolls in it where i still tried to suffer it out and just play but the game was not a balanced or fair game at all because i was one of two people trying to do anything i'm talking about games that are actually games where everybody in it are earnestly trying and playing i don't know how much analytics you have to do to get that number but i would say survivors definitely 
windows I often. Don't think that's actually mm -hmm. another you'll be able to oh, find. Here's a scenario. I get in the scenario all the time as a sheep because I don't play wolf anymore. I haven't played wolf in months. I just can't. I just sheep always. Every time I'm a trader. The scenario I get into is I super delay first objective. I manage to steal parts like a motherfucker. My teammate mm -hmm. even double sheeps with me maybe and we were uh, doing different bits of sus to keep the sus off of each other so that survivors don't have a clue until past the halfway part of the game you got maybe 12 minutes left and they finally complete first objective i'm like oh we're smashing we're good i'm balls deep sheeped in it and they have no idea then we continue to second maybe everyone death balls maybe something happens and oh escape pod comes in and i can't hit my remote sabotage second gets completed i have to rush immediately to the escape vehicle then because somebody was sitting at cabin waiting to hit the the, uh, the radio already then Immediately, my only option now is I'm a sheep with like 1,200 health off of the little crate that I managed to sneak five seconds away from the survivors. And now I'm running to the escape vehicle to fight probably three or four or five people all at once, you know, and, and hopefully I got med kits. Hopefully I can get up to the door and stop somebody as they're at the door so I can catch them by surprise. Like that scenario has happened to me so many times, regardless of how good I do as a sheep early in the game. And then I just get well, that's based around your partner, though. Sometimes I even clutch it. You know, sometimes a partner comes in clutch. Something, but if if we're doing like double sheep stuff, which I tell my partner to do a lot because it's more fun than yeah. anything else, then uh, yeah, it's like I, I got to choose fun over winning because the there is a good probability that something like that scenario I just described happens. Two minutes, guys. There is a Two good minutes. chance. I yeah, like the that's... fact that we have stats coming up. Uh, I, I'm just gonna say right now. Um, you both sides here seems to be counting on pizza to make your argument for you, and when no, it, I'm it, not it, counting on she's pizza. She's biased. She's a devil. Pizza and here. Look more well, what I what I mean is that maybe next time both sides these stats are super interesting, and I would have maybe expected you guys to bring them and not being on pizza's but, role to bring them to debate. Uh, so j j just a just a hint for the don't next. Do anything for our point or weren't anything we wanted to point out though. So why would we? Bring yeah, I just wanted to know how sweaty it was. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like, more about uh, personal interest and not about an argument yeah. to the debate. To be honest, yeah. it's more like a out of yeah. subject. Okay, awesome. Right. Quick, quick question before and, we go to break for the blue team here. Uh, since you seem to think that, well, I'm going to rephrase that because it seems out of a bias. Since you guys think survivors are stronger, do you ever play seven player games instead of eight? It's called Blackout. No, I mean seven oh, players, like just five survivors too, and you start with seven instead of a full lobby. Would that do you do it? And would that fix the would it fix the overpower issue you seem you 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 bring up to the debate? No, I don't typically do it, and I also don't typically play games with one trader. I had I played a couple recently, and they were also just very 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 weird, like a five player game. Um. The, the eight players, I think, is like an important thing to the game. When you take that out, it gets a bit odd. Seven player games, they're not like actually the worst thing in the world. I'd say they're probably fairly balanced, actually. If what was the question? I missed the question. I'm sorry. Since you since you think that the game is uh, the survivors has an uh, unfair advantage or they overpower, do you ever play seven player game instead of eight? And if not, why? That is interesting. I don't ever do that, and I don't think I would, because, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily seem like it would be, like, imbalanced, because there is a lot of games where somebody just DCs off-rip anyway, and you end up with a seven-player game, and as long as it wasn't a trader DCing, it's fine. Um, but I don't see myself doing that, because the game, yeah, it definitely works. <laughs> well, you know, I, don't, I haven't really thought about that, to be honest. I don't have it formulated a full The blading, I see. Yeah, but okay. uh, can I bring can I bring uh, a yeah, one comment minute, that right, I heard ahead. from someone? And... Yeah, go ahead. Um, we have one minute. Somebody on blue side earlier said that uh, I think it's Zeke actually that said it. That said, uh, if you have six survivors, you have a chance. But uh, if you have one guy that doesn't do anything, then that's GG. And literally having a seven player game means having that five survivors. And you, then you're way more at the whims of RNGs and people, which I would rather not have. <laughs> There's already too That's much all. of RNG. 
Okay. We are already uh, more than one hour in. So, guys, we're going to take our second break for the night. When we come back, I already have seven questions from the chat that I've uh, lined up for you guys. Uh, guys in chat, if you have any more questions you want to ask or debaters, please use uh, the, the break as opportunity. You can go to the channel points and use highlight my message and not highlight my question, as I said earlier. Uh, use highlight my message. I've removed the other option anyway. And if you highlight your question, your message, it will automatically go in my queue for questions. So we were going to take uh, the last five minute break of the night. We will be right back. Guys, thanks for being here. Do not leave. We'll be right back. We have the blue team over here that argue that the survivor team uh, has an unfair advantage over the uh, trader team. And we have uh, the red team that's, that will argue that both teams are kind of equal in their, uh, or that the survivor uh, trader team is, uh, is more advantageous. So what we're going to do now, we're approaching the end of the debate. We are going to give, you forgot to remind. I, 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 I'm sorry, please. I don't get it. Uh, we are going to take another five minutes. I'm going to give you five, another five minutes. I know Saul wanted to bring something. And after that, we are going to go into the audience question. We have a bunch of audience questions, guys. If you have more questions, make sure to highlight your questions. And uh, that's pretty much it. Go ahead, guys. You have a one last five minutes. Saul, you want to get the ball running? Go ahead. Oh, I already said what I had to say. But fuck. All right. Yeah, but we were in the oh. break, so I don't know. No one in the audience heard it. Well, I, was, I assumed I was going to get interrupted again if I tried to do it again on here. But pretty much what I was saying was, uh, what Gimpa said, like ended off on earlier was he. They both like to sheep. Personally, I like to do whatever. Like I'll tell my partner, hey, do you want a sheep or do you want a wolf? More often than not, they'll say like they want a sheep or they'll want a like, but. A couple times I get like, oh, I want a wolf. And I'm like, okay, bet. I'll stay back. I will sheep. I'll just keep relaying information to you. And when I'm wolfing, I'll often ask information like, hey, so how far along are they going with the task? Every like, say, uh, two minutes or like a minute interval. Just keeping up, touching base with the guy, trying to get a good communication going. And more often than not, we keep them busy for at least like a good 10, maybe a the whole game actually went a couple of times I've done that where we just kept them busy for a full game and I just got super buff killing off them whenever he did a solar pulse or he got we got lucky and, and we did hysterical gas. I come running in because I'm already exiled. I start shooting at people from the cabin and then I just instantly run away again. I down like two people. They get rest back up, but they don't have much health. Uh, two more come back down from like the fucking north side and I start attacking with them. I'm about half health, but I'm already at like four, 2k health. Doesn't really change much. That's all. So in those scenarios, do you ever get like annihilated by slowing weapons by survivors? Is it just cat? Like sometimes you go up to get your gunshots off. I got lucky. maybe you get somebody and you don't ever get like blasted by a poison crossbow or a trank that you didn't expect and then just like destroyed. Oh no, I got shot by tranks, but I also. But I would also keep a trank on me and a regular gun on me as well. So like I would sacrifice what I could, what my inventory of like food instead. I'd keep a health kit. I'd already stack up on food. My health is already up. I guess I keep med kits in my hand, one like slot. I keep a melee weapon in another, poison, and then regular. But none of that's gonna save you from a trank and and a, and a gun yeah. or two though. Well, no, but again, the like I said before, I've dodged some throwing stuff at me. I've dodged bullets, them. like when they shoot at you. Or a bad aim. Uh, if you're tranked, you're not dodging bullets. You're you're well, crawling if I'm tranked, away from so that's bullets. If they got, that's if they get the trank off. If I or see a them, poison crossbow, and all that takes is a defector, and the defector's likely passing out multiple poison crossbows as uh, well. Honestly, if one. like as when I'm defector, I just feel sad every time I fire a trank at somebody. Yeah, I do I've started just using them. I, just I do it when away. I can't save someone from a traitor and I accidentally let a survivor die. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess this traitor dies now. <laughs> Trank. And then everybody murders them, typically. Even if they have, like, 4,000 health. That's just... Game over. Yeah, being shot Good by night. a trank. Poison crossbow on top of it. There you go. Now you're going 90% yeah, slow. It's, it's, it's the end. You got shot by a trank and it's silver. Your game's over. You got shot once and GG. And they get them, like... 
it seems like a but disgusting again, there's also time. my partner that's there as well that can like they're all i've damaged at least a couple of people he can now, your partner's couple... like brother i can't help you i'm sorry that's what your partner's doing <laughs> that's true, brother. A lot i've times, been on both sides of that conversation <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but like sometimes partner, like my partner will just come in and clutch, like how you said earlier that when you guys double sheep and sometimes a partner will come in clutch, sometimes they'll just let you out to die. But l later on, not we've delayed them for so long, they get all right. Well, we got one of them at least, or so they think. Identity thief could come in if they feel like it. Probably won't though, or they'll just walk by the body. People will be like, "Are you the identity thief?" They start going attacking them because people are getting paranoid. They don't know who the other person is and what's happening overall. There's a lot of things that could happen. Doesn't mean it's always gonna. Just means that it could. But but when you use the phrases of like luck and could and may, these things are also less likely than three survivors just going, guys, let's do the objective and running to a bunker without you even finding the, them to deter them and being back. You'd be surprised minutes. how often that happens and how less that happens because I again I've had some of those lobbies, but I also more often than not will get the shittiest lobbies ever, where people are like, oh. Right? Which happens more often? That's the argument. Is it more the often? The shittiest lobbies happen more good? often. Uh, How many of those people are you reporting? Not anymore. Lobbies, not though. since Game Pass is gone. I, I I get a lot of where it's like a group of three people that have been playing for like a week and they're already good as fuck at the game. They're already slamming objective and they they know how to stick together. They know how to use guns. They know like that's because they're new to the game. They just want to get the thing done and just keep getting all it the done. Time. I'm just but saying, more... like, like, the typical random lobby is not as low tier of experience as they used to be, especially nowadays. Okay. Mm well, I don't I play know. random lobbies a lot anymore, so I cannot attest to that. Same. I, I uh, want to jump honestly, into audience question I... right here. Go ahead, uh, Zeke. I give you 30, se 30 seconds. Thing. Yeah, 30 um, seconds, and then we go. On the note of Saul's thing about how it's super easy to distract people that are being on their game and stuff like that. The number of times when I'm on my hyper aware try hard mode that I've just blown a traitor away or absolutely murdered him without him having a chance to react because he did something super sus that he didn't think was. And stuff like that'll happen very often. And that's another thing where when people are in that try hard mode, yeah, sure. When people when you're like it's all about games, it's all about people, but we're talking about like if everybody's doing something or if everybody's on the same page. People dial it back because the game's not fun and it's kind of broken on survivor side. <laughs> Unless you just go wolf and, as some people would say, not play the game correctly because it's social deception. Yeah, I dial it back as a survivor all the time in the vast majority of games. Even if it's randoms, I'm like, these randoms are slamming first. I'm going to sit over here and just like uh, talk to chat and, and stream because there's no point in me helping. It's just the game's going to go too fast if I do and the traders are going to have no chance. That happens all the time. That being said, we are now going to jump into audience question. Thank you guys in the audience. You have provided us with a lot of questions tonight for our, our participants. Uh, I have a question here. The two next questions will be aimed at everyone. They're not aimed at everyone in specific, but they're kind of uh, related. So I want to go with them first. Uh, Moose here says, uh, do neutral roles make the game more balanced or unbalanced? Um, a, a they actually bring playing... to chaos that actually help to balance what's yeah. unbalanced. An, a neutral role playing proper neutral makes the game actually much better. The the yeah. uh, five v one v two when the neutrals kind of just doing the messing around and mess messing up both teams kind of and playing whatever edge they kind of want to play in their own world is honestly the best thing. When they're picking a side and being another team, that's when it just becomes even more broken on both sides. Like six pretty sure unbalanced. If... I'm pretty sure if you ask, uh, like, every Project Winter players that actually play casually the game, I'm pretty sure 9 out of 10 will actually tell you TIDT for their favorite role because they lack the actual uh, responsibility of doing either of what a trader or survivor can do. So that brings balance to the game to something that's in balance. Um, the reason that ID Thief used to be my favorite role and is not anymore is because yeah, the survivors... Yeah, one out of 10. Well, I'm just, I'm just with saying in my in my anecdotal experience, um, the survivors are stronger now that they've had all these buffs, and ID Thief doesn't really have like an innate passive or anything that can make them match a defector or match a hacker that went to a wolf tower or match a trader in any capacity. So like it's hard to do evil stuff because you're totally risking yourself. You might just get outright murdered, and they think you're a trader if you if you're trying to do evil things. And a lot of players 
they straight won't do evil things. They'll just side with survivors and they'll be like, oh, I, I, I did a lot of objective at the end when everyone's getting the escape vehicle. They're like, I did a lot of the objective. Can I take a roll from someone, please? You know, and it's like, oh, that's basically a survivor. That that player was pretty much just a survivor in a game where the survivors yeah. were already doing well. And that happens often, too. Anybody else want to jump in on this question? No? Okay. Uh, second question that we have here is from Clova, and it's uh, pretty much on the same topic, but I think it's going to bring a lot of uh, uh, discussion here. Clova ask, asks, would introducing new role balance things out? If so, what would be the role? Be, what would the role be, and how would that help? I have a whole topic about it on uh, the episode of the IDT. Uh, I actually suggested some roles. You did pretty good. But would they would they uh, help with the balance? Or you seem because you're on the side that it says that the game is. I mean, balance balance. balance wise, I think it would do the same thing as I said for the previous question. As if, uh, like, since it's a neutral role, it bring balance to what's in balance without actually balancing it because it creates the chaos that actually helped to balance stuff. I said the word balance too many times. No, I'm lost that, in my That time. was not very balanced. No. Uh, but anyway, I suggested some, some roles. The, people seem interested into it. I could talk about it. One, uh, one yeah. of them would have been uh, to actually uh, have the tracker as a neutral role. And instead of like actually stealing the corpse of someone, you actually track someone. And once they die and everything, you take their role. One of them, one the other one was something like more of an enchantress type, a little bit like in a, the werewolf game, where you actually just need to actually when you actually need to enchant the people, like they know when they are enchant, but like it doesn't change their their actual objective. And once the enchantress dies, well, you know, it's like his mini game to actually win the game ends. There were stuff like, like that. I feel like those roles could be like a. A slippery slope like that could be very easily something that that uh just leads to a gameplay that people don't like i don't know you'd have to really really fine-tune something like that oh yes definitely you, you, it, like the perfect example would be to just look at blackout they ha they have roles that are, are actually not in the normal game and that i'm pretty sure some people wouldn't like to see like in the normal game but do you think they will bring a balance or they would unbalance the game even more whatever side of the question of balance you are they would indirectly balance the game because of how people play the game not because of how to roll is actually made i i think the topic of adding new roles is a very iffy one and as i said in chat i think power creep is very real and scary and I, I honestly roll. missed. I missed when I started innocent, like with innocent, and you couldn't do anything but actually just be a survivor to a degree. And you need to worry about playing the game, not the abilities and things you can do. I think that's a genuine problem. So I think I think more roles good. Make sure the abilities are uh, in a very subtle way is definitely hard. Uh, I heard you, Gimp. Before we go to your role, I just want to check with Preston and Mirth if you guys have a, any opinion about would uh, adding more neutral role to the game would help or make the balance better or worse in your view? Uh, it would make things more interesting. It would definitely add more uh, dynamic situations. Whether or not it would be balanced or not, I couldn't tell you because I wouldn't know what that role would be. Uh, awesome. Murph, any opinion on this? I think it would be fun, so I'm all for it. <laughs> At least it, I think we all agree. It, it, new roles would be fun. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but would it fix the balance? Well, you, you're oh, on the not, not at all. Okay. Zero percent chance. <laughs> awesome. Gimp, you had a role you wanted to share with us? Oh, it's like a special role that I just made up in my head now. And um, you would you would be one person. It's just one role that has this ability. Where after seconds completed, you could see the armory, and then traders could see the armory too. But the one person would have to be there to open the armory. So traders <laughs> could at him, huh. and they could call him the marine. The marine. What what did marine do? I think no Sorry. one thought about that before you. Mm, well, <laughs> no. 
Uh, but no, nerf all the gun parts out of all the bunkers and all that, and then you can totally bring Soldier back. And then the balance is better because you don't need double defector anymore, and you can take triple scout out as well because the Soldier exists and put Innocent back in as well because, Zeke, like Zeke said, Innocent is like, it was like a core, actually important part of the game, I think, that was removed as far as like a survivor that a traitor could claim to be very easily, you know, at any point. Just and like, completely innocent. murder very easily something. at any point. Cry? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I want to say something like uh, in the same vein as uh, Gimp said, like uh, a thought that just had in my head. What if instead of uh, nerfing guns or anything, uh, you make it so that you can craft guns only at the bench inside the armory and you cannot find guns anywhere else on the map. So you can actually find gun parts all you want. But as soon as you you can only use a gun if you open the armory and craft them there. And then you bring Soldier back too? Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. Because now if you know that everybody got guns because the armory was open, not because they actually found guns. And, and you're saying that would fix... can literally trap it and set it up so that when they go there, you can spring your attack and the armory can be the place where people go to die. But again, do you says. think that would fix yeah. the balance problem you seem to have with the um, survivor? It would, or would it I make it that's... even more overpowered for the survivor? So I think no. that centralizing No, it would give traders... Guns centralizing the guns into a more predictable location and having the traders if the traders can see where where armory is at after first objective is completed the same as an innocent role whether you give that ability to tracker whether you bring soldier back etc um as long as the traders can like plan on that i think really the only overpowered survivor tactic would be like everybody go there at once but if you're a trader and there isn't a soldier or a tracker or whatever that has the ability you claim to be that person and you be like hey me and you go there we're getting all the guns we're not sharing the guns with with shady mcgee over there he, he was stealing parts out of first earlier and then you bring people to kill at the armory and the armory is where people go to die then you good old tactic of up. like bringing people inside a bunker and just kill them swinging when they once they're all in see Easy. that you could do that later in the game, I guess. Uh, the survivors are usually pretty smart about staying outside, and they could do that with armory too. Armory is appealing. Guns are appealing, though. Yeah, you yeah, can you can bait people so much easier with armory. It's like a it, thing it's a little bit like want. lab too. That uh, my idea would bring it a little bit like lab right now. It's like you're not forced to open lab and revive someone, but like if it's the optimal play to do, well, people will actually do it. it it's gonna be a little bit more like that. It's like you don't need guns to actually finish play. objectives. I'm going to have to go with the two other questions. Well, the first one here is not a question. It's a comment from uh, Thomas uh, Red5, who is a dev from the game. Apparently, Thomas uh, went and went into the stats and uh, went even a little bit more deeply. And says the overall average for survivor win percent is 38, 38%. And he says that's only including the games with uh, eight players and doesn't count the games with disconnects. So I got a question toward that stat. Still flawed to a degree, though, but uh, it's yeah, much. I have a question toward that stat, though. It's uh, Does it count like every survivor that win or just one out of six? Let's say, for example, survive. Does it count like a win for everyone or it's does it one, count like? I think. Because it's That's... normal that the number is low then. Because if, because if you consider that like only one survivor escaped and the other five died, well, that means, oh, it's a 20% win rate, right? With one game. So it's normal that the it, that number looks low, but it's not that low. Okay. Uh, okay. We're probably gonna have a comeback from uh, likely have a comeback from t uh, Thomas here. Uh, FTL mentioned and FTL, you give me a good segue. Last week we had a debate about the armory and uh, what uh, what should we do about the gun problem. And FTL made a suggestion that is pretty much similar to what Cry said about the armory being the one place when you craft guns. So uh, if you guys want to hear about that, it's on my YouTube page. You can go to youtube.com, find Aspargus Dikery, and you're going to find last week's debate, and you're going to have uh, FTL's idea about that. It was uh, received with a lot of uh, criticism, just going to say. Uh, one, again, uh, we are going to uh, we're gonna go with one last question here. I never said you're What? So I'm reading chat, sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is a question for pizza here and it's a very interesting question she asked how do you feel project withers has handled balancing the game in this situation how are they compared to other games with the same number of imbalance so other games that by by design bring a few numbers a little team versus a bigger team 
I feel like what they they're doing <clears throat> is good is how often they do it that's maybe not because like if if let's say like they add something new to the game or like something they tried to change for a balance and you're like oh okay well it's a work in progress that's cool that's not too bad and then you have to wait two to three months for like a small fix towards it because like there's this and that's that wasn't perfect towards it well it's it's kind of long but like i, f I feel it's like 50 50. i feel like like three quarter of what they added is good and then the last 25 percent would need like some hot fix like right away like maybe a week or two after max and like instead it comes like a month and month and a half later with the next update anyone else want to jump on this one um being brutally honest i feel that updates are kind of like hit or miss there's there's like the one where traders were given uh the ability to craft global events that was like the most fire perfect update i have ever seen on the game that every single change was like tailored towards better balance tailored towards you know basically what i've you know in my opinion what i wanted to see the game go towards and then it's just like some of the other ones and just like yeah like i said it takes a little while for some of the other stuff but in, i i feel like there's there's some issues that have taken a good while like maybe they're probably right on the horizon about to be fixed but man, I, I get impatient and I, I end up just playing other games in the time. I'm just like, I'm waiting for this game to be more balanced so I can enjoy it more without getting frustrated. Um, so it's like, yeah, some, some, some are good. That patch with the, if we get more that has like community asked for stuff, uh, which we already get a ton of, that's even, no, I can't even fairly ask that because this is like the most community, like, like all the stuff that's been added from suggestions in the discord is like more than any other game that I've ever played. So I can't fairly I, say that, but I, I think if I understand correctly, Pisa's question was also uh, hinting at other games that also offer a, a on unbalanced by default. Uh, let's say, I don't know if any of you play uh dread Unger. there's the same, the same number. You have two thralls versus six quote unquote survivors. Uh, other and... games are terribly imbalanced and compared to this one, uh, in my opinion. And, they're like the social deception genre in general is super hard to balance i think especially yeah. when you add in combat so yeah dread hunger is definitely a specific case when it comes down to it um that game you have to learn a lot more for that game and it's just ugh. the main problem I, with social deception game is that half of the game is played with actual like it's the player that actually make the game not the game that actually make the game itself like you do social deception there's nothing in the game that will actually force you to say or do some actions so like some game it, like i think the best balance you can make is add better customization to the people because you have to adapt to what an actual player actually does or say it's like i find sometimes power lines being too imbalanced because they're too far away so i like custom game that removes them but like it's not something that you can actually like balance to everyone else right like if someone let's say someone like gimp actually like too much to sheep well you won't balance the game like toward nerfing or buffing the sheep just because gimp plays it a lot or like me wolfing for example like there's some stuff that you actually have to adjust that you have to let your own players actually adjust it and not actually have a a hot fix or a patch to actually change it okay last that's question. why social deception are hard to, to balance I I, in my opinion, yeah. at the optimal seconds. level Maybe. of play is is where it should be balanced, and everything else falls into place. That if you if you balance it at the high level, everything else is going into going to be fine. Okay, last question I have. This one is for me, and this one will be answered by only one word. I want all of you to give me your opinion. Do you think the game should be balanced, keeping in mind the uh, casual player? Or the I would say veteran player that actually know what they're doing and they play it a lot. Uh, when they balance the game, which one of the two should they focus on uh, primarily? Kemp. Casual one player word. is always Casual gonna players. have fun. Zeke. I think they should focus on the mid level. Preston. <laughs> A balance between the two is probably best. Cry. Casual. Saul. What was the question? Should the dev, uh, when they do balance, should they primarily focus on casual players or experienced players that mostly know what they're doing when they do changes? Uh, 
Casual. Casual of Mirth? I actually don't think that balance is an issue. I think it's more of like player retention with the casual flair. So you'd rather have still still focusing on casual to make them come back instead of focusing on the quote unquote die. I actually think that you do have to balance for the higher level gameplay, like Gimp said, but I think the issue here isn't necessarily balance. A game can be unbalanced but really fun, for example. But you have to like focus on making the game understandable and, like almost to a degree that you just kind of like play it and you can understand it instead of like having to grind out hundreds of hours to get every single nuance of the game. And that's... that way you can keep your community growing. That's interesting. Uh, thank you all for your input. Uh, we are already at the end of this debate. Before we go, uh, a few things I want to do. I want to thank everyone in the chat for being here. That was awesome. You guys interacted a lot. We've never had that me that much question for the debaters. Uh, there's still a few questions that we did not uh, you so far. Before we go, I also want to give our debaters a one last minute just to tell us what you think of the debate. Did you change your mind or are you still in the same mind you were in the beginning? Uh, and where people can find you if they want to hear more about you? Because I know a few of you are content creator and I would like everyone in chat to have a chance to go and follow your content if they so desire. So, Gimp, what do you think of the debate? Did you change your mind and where people can find you? Uh, it was fun. I did not change my mind. Uh, rather, I even more solidified my thoughts and in, in, that I initially had. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I liked the debate. Thank you for inviting me. And I play Elden Ring on Twitch. If you guys want to watch. Do you die a lot? Uh, yeah, I saved all the hard content for stream, and I'll probably start streaming right after this. Awesome. And uh, well, are we gonna do games? Uh, we'll like see. PW? We'll see. Probably. Uh, Zeke. Um, yeah, I uh, thank you for having me at the debate. I had a lot of fun. My opinion hasn't changed, and I think in games people are trying, it's survivor side. So, uh, yeah, you could catch me on Twitch if I stream, and I'll be there with my dog, Will Benny. With Benny, Benny and Zeke. I should change your, uh, your Twitch handle to Zeke and Benny. Uh, Preston. Uh, my opinion hasn't changed, but when I came in here in the first place, I had a different, uh, understanding what this whole thing was going to be so that's that's my own fault uh <laughs> but yeah no my opinion hasn't changed uh and yeah i, I make youtube videos uh preston man oh awesome thanks that's for it. being here preston uh cry um also my opinion hasn't changed but i'm also very happy that the uh both sides had really good argument to actually prove their point. Like, I feel like it's more, uh, it's a battle of like uh, two sides of the same coin, I would say. And uh, it depended on how we saw the, the actual uh, question. But like, I think everyone's kind of on the same page. I'd like to thank you. Uh, thanks everyone that was there and thank the host too for, for presenting this. Uh, you often see me in games with pre-made people on to, on Project Winter, and that's pretty much it, because I do not stream anymore. You should. You should. So. I should. Uh, uh, what was it again? Final words. Oh, yeah. I'd just like to say thank you for having me. And uh, my two teammates, again, were great. I feel like I talk too much and I should have, and... I'm glad. I hope everyone has a good night. You, I'm just do nothing. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today at the list last minute. Saul joined us at the uh, a, a this morning and uh, Mirth. I don't think my opinion changed, but that's kind of because I feel like a lot of veteran players have the same opinion. You know, um, the game is definitely more skewed towards survivors when they get guns, and skewed towards traders and more casual lobbies. Yeah, that's basically it. And you said earlier you don't you don't do content, right? I don't do content. Yeah. Oh, you say yet? Oh no, I'm ne I'm never doing content. <laughs> Screw oh, content. You stream once or twice. Yeah, and then it got boring. Oh no. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> guys. Also, my my name is Spiderus Dykery. I'm Benny a knows you lie even Canadian more. streamer, and I play uh, mostly social deduction games. I have two talk shows on Wednesdays. I have this talk show called Republic Rants with our friend Moose and our friend Agaton. Oh. We talk mostly about uh, Star Wars related stuff. Yesterday we did a, a two hours review 
I mean, in, in a, a two hours review of the latest Obi Wan Kenobi trailer, and we talked about our nine worst character from Star Wars. So if you're interested in looking at that, it's on my YouTube page. Uh, also, I stream Project Winter on the weekend and tomorrow with FUD and the Kingdom of Nerds. We're going to do some Among Us, so feel free to follow and subscribe to my channel for that. I will not be playing the uh, after game, uh, after the after debate Project Winter tonight, but if one of you guys uh, want to host it and you want to stream it, I will be very happy to raid uh, one of you so everyone in chat can, uh, can watch this game when you can try and prove if the survivors are overpowered or not. That being said, thank you everyone so much for being here. We're going to have another debate next week, same time, 10 p.m. EST. We are going to talk about uh, if the game needs a hard mode or not, and if uh, bringing in hard mode to the game will be either a problem or a good addition. Guys, thank you so much. Don't leave. We will be raiding one of these uh, gentlemen here, and they will most likely be doing a post-debate Project Winter game. Have a good evening, everyone. Please stay here.